My name is Josh Kragic, and my new album is Blindly Lonely Lovely. We hit rock bottom. Now the thing to lose. I, I didn't want to do a, a, a title track because none of the songs really, to me, encompass the whole album. So Blindly Lonely Lovely sort of suggests variety, like you say, but it, it also it, it, it kind of explains where I was when I was making this thing. When I came to, to set out to make the record, um, I didn't have any real plan. Uh, I didn't go out and say, all right, I'm going to make a Sam Cooke joint. All right, now I'm going to do a uh, John Prime tune. Uh, you know, it, it just sort of happened, the record happened to me more so than my specific direction for it to happen. And, and that's kind of a, the way I've always written is, is with a lot of variety. And, and even if it goes outside of my comfort zone or, or into a genre that is on the edge of, of making sense with the rest of it, if the song works, it works. And sonically, it was fun to, um, to put it all together. But there's a long way to go. I was always limited by budget. You know, this was the first time I could have string arrangements that I'd always wanted to have and bring in great horn players and, uh, and really get to do um, production-wise, sonically, what I'd never been able to do. Uh, with the band, it, it becomes a little bit more of a rock show because there's four of us. So you have to kind of say, I, you know, I say to myself, you know, maybe someday I'll get the samples and make it big. But it's sort of fun to rework it into a rock show. I mean, usually you go see an artist and they're usually a little bit more live and rocky when you see them than their records are. So I think it's okay to say, we well, don't have to do it just like the record. Let's do it so it works and so it's fun. Because I like to go see shows and see different versions than what I've been listening to. I'm never, I, I don't want to be married to anything. The song works on the record, but you have to find out how it works in, in solo and how it works with a four piece rock outfit, you know? And then hopefully someday how it works with an orchestra and, a, and soul girls and that's, that's the goal. I, that's, that, I'd love to tour with a band that, that size and have, just have fun with it. Like a song like Let Me Hold You, people really, I knew it was an important song because when I played it for friends and my, some people that I work with, they were struck by it immediately in an emotional way. So I said, well, that might have something on this one. You know, so people really do respond. Um, because I don't tend to write necessarily stories in my songs, and it's more about the emotional side of things. Um, I think it's easy for people to relate. Sometimes when a songwriter is writing too specifically about his own life, it's hard for me to relate to. You know, because I, I, maybe I haven't done that. But when you write from somewhere that's very emotional, I think we all can f fill in the blanks into our own lives. And that's what I think makes a song work for me. And you don't know where to but For my solo shows, I tend to crack wise in between because I, I know that the songs can get heavy. So I try to bring some levity and just be an idiot up there and... and uh, but it, it's funny, it must be a very strange show for people to watch because uh, I will suddenly then get sucked into the music after just being, a, you know, cracking wise. So it's easy to get in the zone because anytime people are watching me, uh, I'm inspired. It's, 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 I must, it must be odd. I've, I have not watched any real videos of myself, but it must be odd going from jokes to, you know, let me hold you. It's not, it's, you wouldn't think it works, but it does, I think. We were kind of tired of how wussy male artists can get with their lyrical content. And, and, and you know, the, the, the chicks, they get to be badasses. They get to sing about whatever they want and be cool and tough. It's harder for male artists, I think. So we decided we were going to try to be, to be 
challenge ourselves with our um, content lyrically on the songs we were, we were writing. And Don't Make Me Hopeful was sort of, um, sort of a song that, that was kind of a, given the finger to, to, to the industry in a way. But, you know, going on to a show like I did, I knew that like, they tell you, and I wish I could tell every contestant that ever goes on these ever again. I was old enough to be to know this, but they tell you like you're the greatest thing. You're going you're going to change the world, and that's bullshit. You know, you have to work really, really, really hard. So in a way, it's 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 saying you know don't don't make me hopeful. You know, don't don't you know don't I, I'll, I can starve again and be just fine without you. It's there's, there's a love story in there somewhere. Um, you know, where you don't want to let people down. I don't want to let people down at the same time, but I'm, I, I, I don't want to make them too hopeful either. When your last straw's about to break. I think I was lucky to not ever give a damn about going on a show like that until I was 30. And by the time you're 30, you're already like, ah, I guess this is it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, I, I wasn't, I, at that point, I wasn't going to be anybody else but myself. But I think if you're younger, it's a lot harder. You know, I saw some of these kids on those shows and, and some of these other ones. They get chewed up and spit out. And it's partly because they don't know what they're doing. They're too young. Or um, they don't work hard enough. They don't have the right drive, the right ambition because it's not easy. When I went back to that show and somebody asked me, what, do you have any advice for me? And I said, yeah, don't worry about the rest of this competition. Worry about what you're gonna do afterwards because that's 10 times more important and maybe even immeasurably more important than these next four weeks where you're trying to get votes from the public. So that, that's all gonna go away. The lights are gonna shut down and you need to bust your ass. So that would be my advice for anybody that goes on a television show like that. I think the fact that I've been playing in bars and touring and making records for 15 years um, gave me a real solid, um, you know, shoulder, set of shoulders to, to, to have my head on, you know? Because uh, I remember, <laughs> kind of going out there and getting ready and people were like, oh, they're like gonna throw up. I'm like, what's wrong? They're like, there's 4,000 people out there. I'm like, yeah, that's great. You should be excited. That makes it easy, but it doesn't for everybody. For me, it's like the more people I sing in front of, the, the more comfortable I am. But I just don't have the words. Let me hold you. If I could get it, Listen to by as many people as I can, realistically. Um, people will talk about it. They'll say, oh my God, what, what is this? It's because I, I think that I'm different. Um, I'm probably too honest, and, and that, I think that's, that's sort of odd. And I think that if people hear it, um, they'll like it, and they'll talk about it, and they'll say, what? he was on what? Because I remember sort of being on that show going, what the hell am I doing here? I don't, I don't even, what am I doing here? This isn't me. And it still isn't. Um, and once I think people hear the record, especially people that may be dubious about folks that come from shows like that, I think the music will speak for itself. And that's my hope. My name's Josh Kragic. My new record is Blindly Lonely Lovely, and look for me on Last FM. Let me hold you. It's all that I can do tonight.